how is the board actually rotating? It's because upper body motion translates into down body motion. The mistake that people make is sometimes people's kinetic chains aren't working in harmony. Usually before heat, you try to identify two peaks. It was one of the best sensations of the world. Welcome to the Basis Podcast. We got my buddy Richie of Okia Surfing back at it again. Uh, decided to do a follow-up podcast um, to the last one he did with us. And it was probably one of the most thought-provoking discussions I've had about surf technique because a lot of the stuff was, yeah, really made me question a lot of my beliefs um, about doing frontside carves. And uh, one of the things uh, that we talked about was this concept of really front leg extension so we're going to be taking a deep dive into um, how that worked out for me for my technique and then uh, richie has another interesting topic to cover with us uh, the kinetic chain um, which we're going to take a deep dive into as well so this one's going to be action-packed um, but then also uh, richie is now the uh, head isa coach for the guatemala team coming up into the isa games qualifying for the olympics so it's super stoked for you man yeah, bro. Uh, it's a really, really great experience uh, to be sharing with you here. And I think what, what you're doing is amazing. I think that um, I, I got really, really nice feedback from the last podcast, you know, oh, like yeah. I got a lot of people like just like asking, you know, like, and then being really intrigued by, you know, what we talked about. Yeah. Because uh, um, it's a really polemic subject you know <laughs> yeah like it's a really really polemic subject and it's something that like uh it's a uh, um you know it's really one of my favorite things to talk about also you know because yeah. like it's uh probably the most interesting subject uh for me and then uh yeah you know like i have a really interesting thing to talk about today which is like a complementary thing to what we talked about and then uh the kinetic chain of movement and then also uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the ISAs and then like how I'm going to do my work with them and then like how much yeah. time and, and, and everything that that's going to be really sick, you know? Uh, yeah. So, so actually Richie and I are actually going to meet up while we're in El Salvador. I timed my surf trip horribly because the freaking ISA games are going to be going on while I'm down there. So I guess I'm going to be competing with Italo and Philippe in the water. Uh, that's going to suck for me, but <laughs> But at least I'll have Richie in but the it's water. Really, there's, bro, it's something really, there's something really cool about our having those guys in the water. It's like a complete show. It's For so, sure. it's so fun to have. Like, you know, I had the experience to see them surfing once. I had an experience to see Felipe Italo. I saw Tati, Tati all, all the Brazilian team was in the ocean at the same time, and it was just like. Yeah, like watching fireworks, basically, like yeah. the Fourth of July. Everything is like up in the air, and like, <laughs> and like it's just you know, like seeing them. Like actually, I I just remember thinking when I saw Gabriel Medina surfing, mm -hmm. I I like noticed that I, I've never seen anybody surfing that fast in my life. Like mm. that was the guy that I saw ever. Like I, you know, like it was just the speed that he was like carrying all the time was like amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I remember who was it? I think it was Joel Parkinson. He was talking about mm -hmm. watching Felipe at the wave pool, I think. And he was just like, Gabriel Medina is on a different level. No one surfs as fast as him. I wonder what it is. <laughs> I mean, obviously, he's very powerful, right? I mean, his legs are just like tree trunks, right? Yeah. Um, but And then, like, if you notice, like, I don't know if you saw the last stop in the dark with... Uh... With Italo? Um with Italo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now stab in the dark. I think that they toss one board. They, they, they yeah. called the unlucky 13 or something. Yeah. And then like they toss the board and then Kolohe tried it. And then like, he was like, I remember like he was talking about thinking that it was a Kavianka, mm. but actually it was a Pang. Oh. It was a T TNC designs, yeah, yeah. but like he was mentioning how thick they were. And then like, I, I've heard many, many times that Gabriel's boards are the thickest, like, Right. boards out there they're like solid like chunk of 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 board so i don't know maybe the guy's into onto something with like yeah his board design or whatever you know yeah that, i i've been interested in trying a cabianca too for that reason um but it's interesting because a lot of pros have been you know when you think about the evolution of surf design like um 
people went too low volume. You know, you think about the Elf Slipper, you know, Surf Wars yeah. and Arrow that Kelly Slater. And then they started going in the opposite direction, going shorter. And, and um, so a lot of surfers started writing more and more volume. But it seems like, fully, I mean, um, Gabby just kind of took it to a whole nother level. But you know, the pros aren't at the same level as him in terms of writing volume. But it's, it's weird. It's crazy just how he can create so much speed yeah well you, you tell me tell me about your experience have you been trying you know like like tell me tell me all about let's discuss it you know like oh, yeah yeah so yeah. let's get yeah let's get it dig into the front leg extension but i do but i yeah i just do want to remind myself we were gonna after we talk about the kinetic chain let's talk about like the preparation that you're doing with your athletes oh, to yeah, prepare them yeah. for uh, the ISA yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's really fun. Like, I, yeah. I, I, like, I will talk about what I'm doing, and like, uh, it's a really exciting part. Yeah, for me, because like, um, I prepare ath athletes for for heats and and stuff before, and then like the since the ISA got the Olympic qualification, you know, like yeah. uh, Fernando Aguirre, which is the uh, the guy from the ISA uh he was the one that got surfing into the olympics you know so like they they became basically the gateway and then the isa event changed from being like the the level of surfers attending to the isa event changed like after you know like the, like basically the, the the people from the the ct you know like would be like full focus on that mm -hmm. you know and yeah. then like Like he brought the CT into the ISA now, which right, is like, right, right, you know, it's crazy. The whole different, a whole different ball game. Like even though all it's like most of the CT surfers, like if not all of them, they went through the ISA. It's like Julian Wilson, I think, was a world champion, you know, in the ISA world surfing game back in the day, yeah, and stuff. But like he came back, you know, like now that this like, right, yeah, it's a very interesting event now, and like I, uh, yeah, I'm very stoked. Cool. Also well, see the CT. I want your tips on how I'm going to compete with Gabriel Medina in Italo when I'm <laughs> <laughs> when I'm serving. That's what I want. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, cool. I guess let's uh, dive into that whole front leg extension thing. So you know, coming off that discussion with you, I was definitely very kind of skeptical. I mean, I knew I know that generating power in your turns, you are shifting onto that front foot, but the idea that you're just going to try and go push as hard as you can on the front foot and not even think about the back foot was very thought provoking and, you know, opposite to a lot of the things that I had learned, you know, mm -hmm. in the way I think about it, but I will. So the way I would describe it is, you know, it took a while for me to figure it out. Like I do generally push on my front foot. Um, You know, I do try to straighten that front foot when I'm trying to do my carves. Um, but I think when I went into it using kind of just going directly off of what you said, mm -hmm. there would be times when I would go into the turn and then I would push hard on my front foot. And what would happen is it felt like I would bog my rail and I would. But I think the reason why is because I was pushing too hard right off the bat on the wrong section of the wave. Mm. But then as I began to uh, get a better feel for it, right? And really, you know, when you're doing any turn, you never really want to like push as hard as you can. If you think about how to generate power in the water through engaging your rail, it's, it's less like a push, but it's more like a sweep, right? If you think about, you know, taking mm -hmm. your hand and you just swing mm -hmm. it as hard as you can and you hit water, it's just going to bounce mm -hmm. off and that's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to displace water, you have to catch the water and then push. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what was yeah. happening. I was just yeah, like, that's, it's, that's, that's true. You know, I was doing more like a sharp push and then that would like throw me off. But then once I really, okay, I would take my time engaging that rail and then feeling the weight on my front foot and then pushing after my rail had engaged. That's when I felt it unlock. And it was, a, it was this, you know, it was one of the best sensations of the world, honestly, when I felt <laughs> that drive and I just felt that, that pressure and that drive on my, my front foot heel rail as I was mm -hmm. going through and wrapping around into the carb. And I was like, Whoa, there, there definitely is something there. Um, and I kept on trying it and now it's like, okay, yeah, you, you do, <laughs> you do want to drive onto the front foot. And I, I knew that, but talking to you really kind of crystallized in my mind, how much you really have to drive onto that front foot. 
right? Mm -hmm. And it's so, super interesting because I was talking to my other buddy and he's like, yeah, what, what Richie said is really interesting, but he's like, nah, it's all about the back foot. And I'm like, that's, that's what I thought too. <laughs> that's what I thought too, you know? Uh, and for listeners, if you haven't seen that previous um, podcast with Richie, you definitely gotta, you definitely gotta watch it. Um, Cause the visuals are, can be so misleading when you watch a surfer, when you watch like Ethan Ewing or whoever, Keith, uh, you know, Kelly Slater, it does look like they're just pushing on the back foot super, super hard and coming all the way around. But now mm -hmm. I'm realizing it's it's about getting onto that front foot, you know? And I, I knew that, but just talking to you really open, like just somehow <laughs> made a flip switch in my mind that made me understand that. Yeah, we, like we went, you know, it's, it's very interesting concept because like um, you have to go into like a testing mode first, you know, it's like t testing the water is always, you know, like it's all, it always takes a little bit of time to, to adapt to. And then it's like such a strong, it's a super strong change, you know, uh, and um, like it just, you know, I remember that we went through it and then we talked about a little compression that we did, you know, like before the turn, yeah. you know, like, cause like um, you really want to coil before you get into like before extending. And then right. like, it is the, about that, like water catching motion before, you know, like to coil yeah. before the turn is really important thing. Cause like, what you really, if you really want to like hit the lip or the carb section or anything, you, you want, you kind of want to generate speed from that change of direction, yeah. you know, and yeah. then you want to be able to, um, have that extension like power, you know, like many surfers that I, I teach this. And then this is a really common thing. It's like, you know, like you come from your bottom turn from a compression into an extension because yeah. like you compress and you extend, you you spring into your turn and then if you don't compress before your turn you know which is there's a compression while you're climbing up the wave then you know you don't have not only you don't have that like extra power that you're gonna apply at the top of the wave but just like uh is biomechanically you know like very hard to change direction while you're just fully extended you know so it's like For you're sure. fully extended and then you get into the top and then like just to keep the legs extended right there it's like changing direction like keeping your legs straight through the whole time but like if you coil on the bottom turn spring then compress a little bit you know and then like on the top you extend again um i can i can show you a video of this uh concept and i remember we went for it um there's a really clear one that i have here um let me share with you and then like Yeah, and while you're pulling that up, I do remember because we were we were talking about it, and you were like, "Yeah, just don't even don't even try to push that hard. Just try to compress onto your front foot a little bit as you you begin to initiate it, and then extend." And then I was like, "All right, let me try it." And then that's when I did, you know, probably one of my mm -hmm. best turns. And I was like, "Whoa, I feel <laughs> it! I feel it!" It's very it's very interesting how it happens. Um, let's see, for example, uh, this bottom turn. You know, like he's like he compresses, then he decompresses, and then like another thing that we were talking about, it is like how how can we tell where the weight is going? You know, because like there's you know like, like when we watch a surf video, it can be really two ways, two sides of the story. And then one of the things that is very interesting about weight distribution is that you can always tell the weight distribution by where the hips of the surfer are placed so yeah. in this case you can see julian wilson does his bottom turn and then you can see his hip you know or like his bum basically is over the top of the front foot mm -hmm. right yep. it's, it's traveling over the top of the front foot you know uh like again there's another interesting thing about here that we talked about last time which is like do you see this spray right here mm. Yep. Okay, so this is the, the this spray. Do you remember that we talked about those two gouges of spray that come out of the rail when you when somebody does a carve, right? Yeah. So the back foot spray would come out of here, you know, mm -hmm. like, and then the front foot spray would come out of here. Yeah. From this side of the board, right? So we can see that there's indeed a lot of front foot weight on this bottom turn uh, by keeping the hips forward through the extension. You can see the hips forward. Then we can see that there's a little compression right there. He coils mm -hmm. a little bit. And then this is this is the time 
uh, where like when I'm teaching this concept, there's a lot of surfers that go wrong in here because mm -hmm. like they go from the extension and then they stay extended. And then when they go into their turn, you know, like uh, they lose balance because uh, they have that extension for long, you know, and then like their body does something funny in between there. Yeah. But if you do a compression in between, which is like, again, uh, it is a front foot compression. You see his chest is over his front knee, you know, like mm. his hips are like tilt forward, you know, he's compressive over, over his front foot on the compression. And then he extends again, right? And then like you can see the water catching on his uh, on his foot right here. Right? You can see yeah. how the rail like twisted the whole way around and then the, the fins come out. So um you know it's it's very interesting because like uh you could go two sides of the story on like every time that you see like a video like this but it's always um the wave goes forward you know yeah um and then there's something that i'm gonna talk about uh also in the kinetic chain of movements you know and then and like how how the biomechanics basically work um but yeah um that's like that's something that I remember that we talked about and that's something that I remember that helped you click in with the motion and then like help you delay a little bit that front leg extension. Sometimes, yeah, I think know? that was not, not be like like this, you know, it's like a moment of calm before right. you go in and like engage your rail fully. Right. Um right. and then I remember the first time that I did this, like I, I remember I did two carves on a wave and I was like, those are the fastest turns I've ever done in my yeah. life, yep. you know? And then it came from that uh, same concepts of like just extending my leg. And then like when I went back in booking, like, you know, like I have hundreds of videos of like, of myself surfing. And I noticed that like, I was trying to twist really fast on carves, you know, mm. I was trying to twist head. Like, you know, I was trying to just like, yeah. first, you know, like pointing, like looking back at the, uh, at the, at the bottom of the wave. And I noticed on my best carves, you know, that I did, you know, back from this concept, yeah. I was being very front footed, you know, and I was like, mm, I never noticed that, you know? Right. Uh, and I, I, that's a really good yes. point. I think, well, or I guess this is something different that came to my mind. Uh, I thought you were going to go in a different direction with this, but. You know, this concept of taking your time and coiling into it. I think it's easy when you're trying to surf just because you see the pros surfing so fast, right? You think that you're just going to do this really aggressive movement. Um, mm -hmm. But really, you know, I, I think a lot of times you have more time than you think you need and that you should take your time with your turns. I mean, that's how the rail, the pros hold their rails for so long and they have these, mm -hmm. you know, beautiful long lines and it goes, they, mm -hmm. they're going so fast that it happens so quickly, but then yeah. like someone that's learning turns thinks, okay, I'm just gonna like whip my upper body, turn my head and just push as hard as I can in like just one, like as if you're like, you know, just trying to like tear something out, but then that usually pushes water and as a result is, is less powerful. Right. So it's like unloading the power as you know, with the, with the, in the right section of the wave in the right timing with the wave, you know? Um, yeah. That's something yeah. that and I've then, been trying to figure know, out. Yeah. It's very, it's very interesting. Cause like, um, then reasons why, uh, people, have a hard time with this concept is like the first the fir one of the first reasons why people have a hard time engaging that front foot like weight you know it is because um foot positioning yeah. right foot positioning is very like interesting subject you know because like uh like foot positioning like it is one of the biggest foundations in in like longboarding shortboarding you know like where are my feet placed whenever i'm going to do a turn and then uh, the back foot, you know, like goes all the way back. You know, we know that it has to be like really, really right next to the, uh, uh, you know, like it has to be right next to the, um, you know, the kick basically, you know, right. like it has to be like on top of the kick and then the front foot, you know, then like, this is, this is another thing, another thing. It has to be on a specific point on the board. So when you apply that front foot pressure, then you don't get stuck. And then what happens is that if people have their front foot a little bit tilt forward from this spot, when they apply that front foot pressure, they get their rail bought, 
they bug the rail, you know, because like the board is not designed to to manage that pressure and that speed, you know, with a different like pressure point, you know. Mm -hmm. Try try to think about your board while you're surfing. Try to think about your board and then try to think. Imagine if you were trying to do a carve with your foot really close to the nose and then like really like doing that front leg extension, you would dig the nose. And then like right, you right. probably like like so there's a specific spot for for turns, you know. Uh, and then another thing that keeps people from uh, improving on this, and then this is where I'm gonna go into the kinetic chain of movements. It is that um, when you become when you're on your road to become a better surfer, right? On your road to become a really really good surfer or a better surfer, uh, and then you start rotating your head, you know, and then mm -hmm. your head rotates your shoulders. Yep. Your head, your shoulders rotate your hips, your hips shift the weight into from your uh, toes to your heels, you know, or your heels to your toes, you know, yeah, yeah. like, so an action from my head shifted, like, down all the way to my feet. So that's why, like, we talked about how where you look is where you go, you know, right. this is something that uh, where you look is where you go, because like, your head moves your like, your shoulders, your shoulders move your hips, your hips move your like legs, and then the like the weight distribution changes from heels to toes. And then as you're turning, it is if you have a bad foot positioning, it's easier, you know, to not dig your rail if your weight's in the back foot to turns. Yeah. Why? Because you disengage your rail. You're not using it. So like right. it's easier to like swivel your board. Exactly. You know? Yeah. With your like with your weight on the back. Right. But actually, your surfing is lower, so it's like you're 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 doing something completely like you, right. you know uh, that feels like an improvement because it is an improvement. Like uh, you, you learn to rotate your body in a way that right. you learn how to swivel your board, yep. you know. And then um, the the thing is that like you learn how to swivel your board, but at the same time, your surfing is lower, you know. So you're like so. You know, it's like, uh, right. it's so a funny isn't, thing. You but know? isn't, so isn't the key then to, and that's kind of what we talked about before, right? Is the key to, is to initiate the turn on the back foot to disengage the rail. So you can flip, you know, your, your rail, your, the weight from your toe side rail to your heel side rail, and then drive into the front foot for the speed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Basically, that coil in between turns is really, really important because, like, it, it like it allows you to generate speed at the top of the wave, like as an like at a bottom turn, like as yeah. an bottom turn. You want to generate speed for your turn, so you have to coil before, and then this does the trick with the with the the way the 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 surfboard grabs the water, basically, and. Uh, you know, it, it fix it fixes like so much, you know, like you could like totally do it the other way where you're extended and then like you go fully into extension. And then, then the pros do this like changes in compression and decompression like so fast and so accurately right. that they become, they're really consistent with their turn. So like they're doing a re-entry and then they're always extending at the top um, of the lip, you know? Yeah. One really common mistake you know, that I see, for example, like talking about this also on re-entries is that when a surfer goes to the top of the wave, you know, and then like, it's going to like hit the lip vertically. If you don't do a front foot kick, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then most surfers, when they get to the, they compress, they get lo super low coiled, mm -hmm. you know, cause mm -hmm. like when you see a surf picture, you know, uh, when you see like a guy, is like hitting the lip, you usually see a surfer that's really coiled. On the top of the lip you know that's that's the picture that you you see so people are trying to coil on the top of the lip but you actually have to extend before you coil really fast so um the order of compressions and decompressions work like for every single turn um and then they fix like the way the the board grabs the water and everything um and yeah, yeah when, you know, when i very, when i imagine somebody subject. oh sorry go ahead what, what did you say yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, oh. you, you were going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, when I think about someone doing a frontside reentry, right, when they're getting super vertical, usually I see them with the front leg extended straight and then the back leg is bent, you know, and then, but mm -hmm. that's, 
But isn't that kind of what you're talking about? Hey everyone, it's Van. Hopefully you've been enjoying the podcast. Hopefully you've been listening to some good stories, getting some good tips that are helping you improve as a surfer. If so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, it'll only take you literally a few seconds, and share it with your friends. That's the best way you can support me so I can continue to create awesome new content for you. So, thanks. So, this is like... Um really interesting video from um uh, from mick fanning you know because like in here we can see many front leg extensions for that matter you know like uh for example here the carve yeah right and then like he's holding that like like speed all the way through and then like usually when we see a picture of a surfer on a magazine or everything we see this like compressed yeah. you know yeah so uh for example when people's doing a re-entry and i think that that image that you showed right there is why everybody thinks it's about pushing it's as hard foot. as you can with the exactly. back foot. But really what it's happening is you've, you've really engaged, you're kind of at the very end of your front leg extension and you've already gotten, you've driven all that power and that speed through the front foot. And at this point, the tail is just kind of like sliding, you know, back around, right? Cause you've whipped it all. Around. Yeah, exactly. So this is the reason again, like, uh, like we talked about why, we see the surfers, you know, like think that it's a back foot weight thing, you know, like yeah. so you see this leg extended, this leg coiled when it's actually like, and if you see the previous podcast, it's actually a compression at the end of your turn that makes it look this way, you know? Yeah. And then like, let's see, let's see more vertical turns. You see, like surfers always coil a little bit here. Yeah. He's coiled again. He's not fully extended yet. You know, he's, he's a little bit coiled. And then after he goes like, and then extends the leg fully, you know, and drives off that front leg makes a really good example of this. Cause like, um, they call it the white lining. So it's like, it's always applying this concept, this really interesting concept. Um, again, I learned from, uh, biomechanic teachers in Brazil, you know, like Brazilian storm biomechanics basically. And then like, uh, I learned from through one of the smartest biomechanical coaches in the world is called uh, Arthur, you know, mm -hmm. and then like he baffled me again here, even when he's doing check turns, you see, you can see like that slide, you know, like, yeah. Right here. Let's, let's see if he could does this. He does a, a really more vertical turn. I think he goes into a more vertical here. He compress. And then like, this is the thing right there. Yeah. Right here. And this point he's fully extending that front front foot right right yeah fully extended that front foot and then also he's looking down he's twisting his shoulders looking down the wave and then that helps them helps him disengage the fence you know this is another reason why people think uh, that the weight goes forward because people think that you're kicking the fins out you know mm. right uh kicking the fins out with the back foot you know but you're actually like what makes the board rotate is your upper body rotation you know so it's making the board go back like in the direction that I was coming for. Yeah. And then what applies power and allows that tail to release is to have all the weight in the front foot, you know? Right. Cause if you, and then like, yeah, go ahead. And then like when people see like this picture and we're like, um, it seems like he, he never, he never used the back foot. The back foot was just following through. Right, right, right. And just so whoever's just listening to the, the whoever's just listening to the audio, so we're looking at Mick. He's or well, in the previous one, he was uh, this one. He's like one o'clock, <laughs> which is nuts. But he was basically at <laughs> he's going back one o'clock. Yeah, he was at eleven o'clock. His board is pointed, you know, eleven o'clock. Front foot is fully extended, and you know that front foot is actually over the lip, right? And he fully rotated his body, arms forward. Uh, and then he just kind of followed through and he had all that speed and he just projected through the lip up and above the lip. And I think Richie, what you were saying is at that point, you're not really pushing hard on your back foot, which makes sense, right? Cause if you're just push really hard on your back foot, right at that point, you're just going to stall the board at the very top of the wave. And you're saying, all right, what you want is, is speed yeah. to just project all the way through and above the lip. And then that's, what's going to cause and it looks like you're pushing hard, but it's just, you have so much speed going up into the lip that that's what's causing all that spray. Right? Yeah. So, and then 
there, there's another thing. Well, there's like when there's a reentry, there's two types of reentries, and then the reentry that's like a little bit under the lip. That's the one that blitzes the lip and just explodes with spray. Mm -hmm. And then there's the one that goes over the lip and, and turns into a fin release, right, right, like this one. Yeah. And then, um, so what is the fin release? The feel fin release is a delay kick with the front foot at the top of the wave. And then again, another concept that people uh, fail to understand a little bit is that um, how how is the board actually rotating? The board rotates because upper body motion translates into down body motions, right? Mm. So. The rotation of the board in here has nothing to do with you kicking your board so it rotates faster, you know? Yeah. Kicking your board with the back foot so it rotates faster. So mm -hmm. the board is changing direction because he's looking down and then he twisted head and shoulders away from the lip looking down. That's right. what makes a board rotate. What makes a board disengage the fence and then re-engage is that, that front foot kick into that like uh, collapse over the front foot at the end or the low finish. As we mentioned in the last um, podcast, yep. you know, so it's actually it is quite easy if you have the right biomechanics to do fin releases all the time, you know, and uh, if you have that front foot extension at the top of the wave, then your fin releases like mm -hmm. are just gonna be like all the time. Yeah. Uh, if if you kick above the lip, if you kick under, then it just becomes like uh, like a power turn, you know, or a rail right. turn. Right. 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 Yeah, and then um, the concept that I really like uh, that I wanted to talk about, you know, and that's something that it follows up to this is the kinetic chain of motion. So there is like, uh, you know, when you when we see like a person, you know, like let me see if I can share with you. The first thing that rotates is your head, and then your head twists to your shoulders, the shoulders twist. Hips and then your hips twist to your 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 legs and uh and then twists the board basically and then like there's change of that happens because of the direction that you move your head around so that is the biomechanics like going from up and down from the head down to the 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 the, the feet right mm -hmm. so there's like di direct relation in between how your board turns and then your head turns so. I don't know if I'm making myself no, that makes, clear with this. No, that one. makes sense, you know, and that's why the, the traditional, you know, um, tip is, okay, look where you want to go and all these things. Exactly. Uh, and I think so it, there's yeah. there's obviously truth in that, right? But I, I think what's yeah. interesting is I think what can be confusing to people is, and the mistake that people make is sometimes people's kinetic chains aren't working in harmony, right? You'll see people yeah. looking in all sorts of directions. I mean, you can be surfing straight and then look left, look right, and you don't move the board, right? You can wave yeah. your arms around in all sorts of crazy directions and it doesn't move the board. And I think that for yeah. those people, they don't have that connection between, you know, the, the, the kinetic chain is not flowing down. all the way through, right? And so that's where you really have to learn to engage and like properly manipulate all the pieces together to get that kinetic chain to be working properly. And I, I'm sure that's kind of what yeah. you're talking about there. Right. But yeah, exactly. So, so it, like, I'm like, I'm also going to give you like, an like a really like, you know, uh, Michael, I call this the Michael Jackson example. And I use it for like, you know, like for like beginner lessons and also for like very advanced surfers. Uh, when I talk about this concept and it's like, how do we rotate? For example, if somebody's calling me from behind, right? Yeah. I rotate like this. So Richie, Richie is my head, then my shoulders, then my hips, and then like my legs, right? right? So every time that I rotate, my head rotates first. So it's like head, shoulders, hips, legs, Right. head, shoulders, hips, legs. So if I'm like rotating my head somewhere, my whole body's following up, down, right? So that's like that. That's the kinetic chain going from up and down. Yeah. But there's also a kinetic chain going from down to up, mm. and then this is what like th 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 this is what uh, connects surfing biomechanics, and this is what I wanted to um, to talk about. So I'm gonna share again my entire screen and um, and then like go back to to the drawing that I had with the girl. So. There's also a kinetic chain going like this, and then they connect, you know. And then how how does this happen? 
and it's very easy when you when you start looking at it so it is about your intention in the way you, you display weight that it comes from down to up so if you have the intention of waiting um with the um, with the back, back foot mm -hmm. my hips are gonna go back right automatically even if i'm rotating my upper body right right yep. so this is what happens i'm like i'm like, i'm rotating my upper body my head my shoulders my torso my my like uh uh my hips right are rotating that way but i'm rotating over with my hips over my back foot mm. but if i take the decision of rotating off my front foot then my hips are going to be forward through that motion mm. and then the two of them connect professional surfers connect the kinetic chain from the down part to the upper part and then the head and then down and then they're waiting all the time on the front foot and then they're connecting the rotations with the weight distribution all the time you know so that's the kinetic chain works both ways it works from the head under yep. and then from the feet above you know so it's a it's a really interesting concept because like like can you explain usually, to me again like, so i'm trying to wrap my head around the kinetic chain being driven by your legs up are you saying that um like it's the what feedback drives the kinetic of the, chain you, is that go ahead so that's that, that's what you're asking what drives the kinetic chain from the down part up it is your intention in weight distribution hmm. and if you have no intention it goes through the to the strongest foot you know which is like usually the back foot which is the uh you know the right foot for most people for, for me like I'm a, I'm a regular footed like yeah. if i'm not thinking about that weight distribution i'm usually doing those rotational movements mm -hmm. waiting over my back foot and i have to force myself to do those movements over my front foot so i don't know if that makes yeah like, no, I, I that makes sense i think i see what you're well okay i see what you're saying the reason right, why it's... i'm explaining this Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. I think I see Go what ahead. you're saying, right? You're right. What you're saying is, okay. So when you're doing a turn, right, you're going to initiate, let's say with your head, generally speaking, your head and your shoulders, but the, you mm -hmm. can have an intention of driving off your back foot or your front foot. And then depending on which one you, um, you decide to drive off of, let's say you're driving off your front foot, that's going to influence how that kinetic chain kind of unlocks, right? Cause you're, cause it's, it's about the feedback between what's happening on the upper body and the lower body, right? So as you're going through the exactly. turn and if, and if you're feeling all the pressure and you're trying to intentionally put the pressure on the front foot, you're going to be twisting and un decompressing and extending off of that front foot, which will then provide feedback and allow you to extend it'll extend off your front foot and then that will also drive exactly. what happens with the upper body i think i see what you're saying right exactly. versus if you do it on your so, back foot yeah so th th this is the thing we have to not only think in surfing biomechanics like to move like from the head below yeah but to move from the front foot like above and then why is it chain it is because the front foot the, it, it, depending on which way like foot you're waiting on then your hips go to that side right and then this is like something that like really changed the game for me because like whenever you see a surfer surfing and then you're like he looks a little bit funny mm. you know and then you're like he's not connected fully right usually it's because they have the wrong weight distribution mm. and then they don't have you know like for example if you have your weight forward you know you have your like your, your way forward your chest is over your front knee or your like your hips are forward and then you look more slick when you're waiting somewhere to fat back foot you usually look like it looks like an awkward body position is always yeah making you break at the same time you know yeah well that disconnection of the kinetic chain is i think a really important point for just people to think about you know like i think about like a whip. I, I think I was using this analogy in another, in another video that I was doing, you know, talking about how people use their hands. A lot of people will wave their hands and their, their hands are going in all these different directions. And that's because they're not, 
you know, they, but you want to use your hands. I mean, really, it's not that much about your hands, but you're using your hands as like the very extension of the whip. But you're driving, like, let's say when you're pumping, you're compressing onto that front mm -hmm. foot and then you're extending exactly. and then that unleashing of everything from your feet down to your knees, to your hips, into your upper body. And then with your hands as well, driving that forward, that's just the very extension of that kinetic chain, right? But when, yeah, when a piece is you know unlocked right when it or is locked into place you're you're prohibiting that kinetic chain from fully extending and un, and releasing the exactly. potential power and energy is what it seems like exactly now like what what i want to show you is like we're gonna see some back foot weight surfers you know okay um so like so so we can like pay attention not only to the rotations but um but to the hips you know so all right, perfect. We're looking at this surfer here, all right? Like, this is a random person. I don't know this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so he's doing his bottom turn, like he's extending, you know, he's coiling, he's rotating his upper body, looking down, you know, rotating his arms and stuff, you know? And then, again, we see a disengage of the rail, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, so by you know like upper body rotation standards if we analyze this turn you know it's, it's not that bad right it's like he's pointing his arms in the direction he wants to go right he's looking back he's trying to point his shoulders where he wants to go now why does he still look awkward yeah there's just no speed right yeah there's no speed he's not driving through his turn you know it's just like a and that's i think a good example so, uh, where it's just upper body movement doesn't really do do it justice for the turn so one thing that is really funny that like uh i think surfing professional surfers they look really beautiful when they surf they look so good when they surf their their body motion they look really stylish and stuff and then most of that style it doesn't come from upper body rotations but it comes from their in, setting their their hips forward or their intentions in waiting forward you know so if you if you only go surfing just you're thinking okay i'm gonna wait forward through the whole surfing like experience right hmm. then you're gonna be surfing with your hips forward automatically like there's like your biomechanics are gonna change because you want to wait on that front front foot and if you're standing on the ground and you're like okay i want to like put the weight forward automatically your your hips go forward and then the hips going forward like you know like the, it makes the upper body go over the front foot which looks aesthetically better generates more speed more balance more stability like there's so many benefits to it. and then we're going to try to analyze like upper body rotations yeah like really cool you know like it translates into the direction the surfboard goes but we're going to try to analyze like the weight distribution of the surfer, you know, like not only because of the, like, uh, the weight the the, the we're going to analyze the hips. We're going to analyze the real engagement. And then that's how we're going to tell his weight is forward. So right here, for example, his chest is over his front knee, hips are forward. Um, the weight is going forward, right? Right here. He does like a front leg extension. Again, you can see the hips tilting forward in here. Mm -hmm. you know so he's mostly front footed through the turns in, in here again like bodies line up over the front foot mm. like bodies line up over the front foot you know so three changes of direction they force the speed forward but also when they go in between turns you know like this is an in-between like kind of like place you know and then you can see that they're naturally way forward driven you know which actually accelerates their board as they go through you know just by trying to wait forward the whole time right um so they're actually like amazing because they are on the front like look look for example like this is like just the takeoff but you can see he's just over his front knee you know like he is um full on way forward right here chest over front knee again again we we, we know here because of the rail engagement that he's applying pressure on the front that front foot on like going to the top we talked in the past podcast that um extending your front leg through bottom turns makes makes you go really fast again way forward way forward way forward and here like does the tap not not that strong over the front foot and here 
again, it's an extension over that front foot. No, it's interesting. I mean, talking to you has actually even shifted how I, what my quote unquote, my neutral surf stance is now, you know, now when I try to think about what like my normal surf stance is, I'm actually trying to be like, all right, even if I'm not trying to perform a maneuver or whatever, let's say I'm just pumping down the line. Well, obviously when I'm pumping down the line, but I'm trying to be more weight forward, more of my chest and my upper body, my hips aligned over my front foot. Cause you're right. That's how you're going to generate speed. Right. And it makes a lot of sense. You generate speed just by, just by, by waiting forward and then like that's why we see surfers connect and then like for example in here if you if you notice there's moments you know obviously where they're gonna like if, if they are gonna no dive where they wait forward we talked about the three three times where, where you can actually wait on the tail and then that's okay you know mm -hmm. like uh, nose diving you know like a stalling for barrel or like stalling for a section that's the only three, three, three times. And then the rest of the time, like you see Tatiana here, like with chest over the front knee, looks really good. The weight's forward, you know, makes the board accelerate. Again, she does a front leg extension. She's forging the way forward for the turn, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, so, and, and here again, like on the top of the wave, she does a coil, the coil is over the front foot. And then in here, she extends her front leg, you know? like like just like a front side car you know so she's forcing the way forward through the whole motion usually the the, the times that we have to force it more uh are um the times that we force the way forward more are like through turns you know like that's where we have to make it really like a statement like i gotta push my front foot and then the hips are gonna tilt forward but as we're just surfing down the line we should keep that intention of waiting for you no know, hips are going to go forward. And then that stylish, you know, yeah, just yeah. That, that, like that, that technical thing is stylish. You mean weight the on the front foot, weight on the front foot on plus the, front the foot. upper body. Yeah. And, and, off body rotation. and it's interesting because there's, um, and when you think about what kind of forces are at play when you're actually surfing, right, there's going to be this compression and extension that goes this way, but then there's exactly. also this rotation and the power is going to come from a, a combination of compression. And then as yeah. you extend, you're rotating. And so it's this exactly spiraling, you know, this extension yeah. while you're rotation, while you're rotating, that's where you get the power. Right. And you're, you're constantly seeing mm -hmm. surfers go this, this way, this way, you know, just depend. Yeah. like, yeah, exactly. When you think about like, you're loading up for a front side bottom turn, right. You actually compress and then you rotate. Mm -hmm your upper body this way as you come mm -hmm. out of it. Exactly. And then when you go to the top of the wave, then you're actually then going to rotate it in the other way and you're just loading, unloading. Yeah. And, and then it's going to fall and, and everything's going to fall and everything's going to follow. And right. then, um, if you want to, if you want to become, for example, if, if somebody wants to become an expert on biomechanics and then like, and then turns in general, it's really easy to think about the way the kinetic chain goes from uh, like down and up, right? Because like the answer of how how do you engage the rail on every single like um, turn comes down to weight distribution. How do I force the way forward on this turn? That's that's the question that like mm. that people should ask themselves if they want to like engage the rail and then look aesthetically better on rotation. Mm -hmm. While we're not on rotation, have like. So if we do this exercise, it's really, it's really simple to, to, to see what we're talking about. When you compress, just you're surfing down the line and then you compress and then your back heel is going to come up a little bit, right? Mm. Your back, your back heel comes up a little bit, you know, like you don't need the full weight on the back foot to, to keep your board, you know, like, yeah, it, like stable, like think about this, you know, what's more essential, uh, when you're like, I don't know if this has happened to you when you're like surfing down the line and then like, then suddenly your back foot disengages for a second, you know, <laughs> disengages mm -hmm. and then you put it back again. Right, and you're right, like, right. oh, nothing yeah. happened. Nothing happened. So like yeah. you surfed on one foot, you were surfing, you we were playing on the water on one foot and yeah. then like you were completely fine. But if it happens the other way around, you know, try to disengage your front foot from the board, mm. like it's game over, mm. you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, uh, many ways where I, where, where I would think uh, I can prove this. And then uh, there's 
like I want just want to go back to my paint uh drawing for a second. Um okay, so entire screen share. Okay, so we're going back to the paint. Uh so if you're going back to the paint, do you see me right here? Yeah, yeah. So like let's talk about the two 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 things. So what makes your board rotate? It is the kinetic chain going down. That's what makes the, your surfboard rotate. Mm -hmm. What makes your hips go forward? The intention of having the weight forward, you know, and then also also translates into a really good aesthetically posture that keeps you accelerating for the turn. So, um, how do how do you turn your board at the top of the lip? How do you rotate your board with upper body motion? How do you apply pressure? And then how do you do, do you apply speed on the top of the wave by kicking with that front foot or extending that front foot at the top? You know, how do you release your fins by kicking on the front foot and then, um, you know, like releasing the pressure of the tail? Why does like, you know, like how does the tail like swivels around? We go back into the question, what makes your board rotate? Upper body motion, right? So uh, that is the secret of uh, fin releases, basically, you know, mm -hmm. also. It's mm -hmm. the secret of fin releases is relieving the pressure of the back foot. You know, mm -hmm. think about it. You go up to the top of the wave, and then we want to release with the fins. We keep with the back foot really strong, the or board just flies away from us, <laughs> basically. Right. You know, um, so it's 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 all very interesting how it works, man. And for sure. Uh, and then, but it works both ways. Biomechanics works from the head down and then yeah. from the like bottom up. For know? sure, and then, There's like this we cover the entire motion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, super interesting. Um, so, what are some of um, what are some of the 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 mental tactical tips? Like, what are you doing with your athletes now that you're getting ready them oh. ready for the ISA games? What am I doing with my athletes? Okay, so are you trying to improve? Uh, are you telling them to like? Are you working on their technique? I'm sure you're doing a little bit of that. Or are you so fitness wise? This, this what are you the, doing? Yeah. This, this is the thing that like I'm gonna do. Like so, like usually when you prepare an athlete for a competition, you know, you go on different cycles. You know, like where you focus on different aspects. Like basically, like if you look at any um, surf program. Uh, I took this from the ISA, actually, the, the, the ISA level two course, you know, like shows you how to uh, basically like set up programs for training, like um, training guys of different level, you know, like athletes and stuff, whatever. The pillars of surfing is a concept that comes from Martin Dunn. Mm -hmm. Martin Dunn is one of my biggest inspirations, honestly. You know, Martin Dunn is like yeah. uh, the godfather of surf coaching. You know, yeah, yeah. he's like godfather of biomechanics he's like you know he talks about biomechanics before everybody you know like his his son daniel dunn was on tour he like he's so good that he put his son on tour that's like, <laughs> and then like he he he's coached like teams from peru argentina on the uh no, peru uh, um, uh a number of times he's coached um uh, um australia you know and then like also he worked with um Conor Larry, you know, like Stephanie Gilmore, Bethany Hamilton. He's like, you know, yeah. very big names have gone for him because he's like really good. So um, there's the two last pillars, you know, which is inspired by him completely, you know, is uh, the pillar of the tactical and technical. Like uh, I will go back into, I will go back into it here. Uh, let me see if I can really quick with you. Share screen and then like i'm just gonna do a glimpse of that so um you see my screen right here yeah this is physical technical tactical psychological so um prepper for surfing goes in uh goes in stages you know and like you go through a stage where you prepare surfers physically you know for a number of time for like a month right and then yep. you're like working on like phys like physical preparation drills you know where like you make for example, a drill could be like uh, you make a surfer catch a wave, run back to 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 you, you know, on the like on the on the beach, you know, and then mm -hmm. like run back into catching another wave, and then like you just like you know, 
just trying yeah. to just give give them the endurance and like get, get used to get the endurance and yeah. blood flowing you know and then the explosiveness and stuff and then um i i was called into this one uh to be honest a little late you know mm-hmm. it was like they call they call me and they're like okay i we want you to coach the isa open uh, and then I was like, okay, how much time do I have to coach them? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Because like that's like that's that's the main question. How much time do I have? And then I like I I was living in England, as you know, and then I have like four days, you know, which is mm-hmm. like <laughs> before the comp. So oh wow, I gotta work. I gotta work with, with what the athletes have physically mm-hmm. and technically, right? Because like. I don't want to give the, like, for example, to change an aspect, a technical aspect in the sport, it, it takes, you know, like a little bit longer than, than the four days. So my focus is going to be purely tactical and psychologically, which they mm-hmm. feed each other. This is really interesting because this could be applied mm. into like regular surf sessions. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So what, how does a tactical preparation looks for a heat, you know? Like a tactical preparation, I'm gonna make it like uh like uh I'm gonna like try to summarize as good as I can. Instead of looking at your heat as a 30, 20 minute experience, you know, it is more more like an hour and a half experience, you know. Mm. Just so psychologically what, I mean by this? what it feels like, right? What it feel what it feels like going into it, you know. Like going going into the heat before your heat, like so, so. Let's let's talk about like um if you show up for your heat thirty minutes, you compete whatever you know. What does a really successful surfer do win heats? A really successful surfer do to win heats is they show up before the heat, you know, mm-hmm. and then like they go through a checklist. That's like how like I can best describe it. And then like big big parts of those checklists is like making sure that your equipment's ready, you know, like having everything ready, everything in place, you know, like your equipment is ready. You have your head, you have your headphones, you know, you're like a little ritual, you know, you have your, mm-hmm. you have your little checklist ritual that you're going through, you know, performing a quality beach observation. What like a quality beach observation is not just looking at the waves and being like, Oh, that's like where the peaks are, you know, mm-hmm. You develop, you, you do a quality beach observation to develop a strategy, you know, into to how to take on your heat because com- cause, um, conditions shift all the time. Yeah. Conditions like shift from heat to heat, you know, it could be looking at completely different, like soil direction, game, air, like the winds different and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for, for that beach observation, you're trying to, um, address the specific things, you know, for example, the easiest access point to to the peak you know that's a really important thing you know mm-hmm. and then like to know exactly where you need to paddle out and then like uh after you catch a wave knowing for example the book la bocana it is a, both left and right you know yeah so like strategic strate- strategically thinking it is like if you go and then you see that there's a right hander that has four turns yeah. And then there's a left hander that has four turns, you know, like mm-hmm. peak splits in two, and then they both have four turns. Then, like, what, which, which, which path you pick, right? Mm-hmm. But you know that if you catch the left, then you have an easier paddle out, you know, right? Then if right you catch the right, and closes out, yeah, you know. So yeah. like, then you're gonna pick right and lefts only because you're gonna like dominate the peak fast going back. But if you catch the right, you know that you're trapped in her like, right, right. you know, like a, a, but a swivel, you know, where like it's gonna take you longer mm. to paddle out because you you know that on the left there's like a red white like white right. channel. Right. So this is key information on a heat, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um. So another thing you're trying to see whether there's a current or not, you know, like, uh, so for example, let's say there, you, you know, that how currents work, sometimes they go to the left, you know, for yeah, two yeah. miles, and yeah, sometimes yeah. they go to the right for one mile. Yeah. And then you, you gotta know where it's going before your heat. Cause like that way, then you can like, uh, be fighting against it or, you know, right, like, right. or just sitting on the on place. Cause like, what happens if you didn't take notice of that there was that current you catch a wave and you end up like you know 
yeah uh 500 yards from <laughs> yeah. from the judging panel you know right, so it's right, like right. you got you gotta know the it's and bits you know um uh, and are you, you trying to and are you trying to make assessments about which peak to sit on right because exactly. la bocana so, there's so, multiple peaks you know kind of so, so for example on a heat preparation like a uh, thing uh usually before a heat you try to identify two peaks you know at least two or three peaks you know uh, i'm talking about the main peak, you know, which is the biggest wave that's coming through. Yeah. The inside position and then the white position. White means like right. if a if a wave is coming like, you know, really big and then it does it catches a different yeah, sandbank yeah. or like or rocks and stuff. And then depending on, on your priority, depending on um uh, depending on like many things, you're gonna pick which peak to see at you know which is like right, really right. important you know but like usually you have two strategies you know you have like if like i have priority i'm gonna see a main peak for example and if i don't have priority i'm gonna come down to peak b which is like you know um like closer to the beach usually yeah, yeah. you know and then like i'm gonna try to catch a wave that like uh is closer to the beach you know so like and on a beach observation you basically drawing the spot you know like you're basically like uh i'm gonna give them uh you know like a place where they can like do a checklist draw their spot you know like identify the the landmarks on the beach really important you know mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. right knowing all this information like a quality beach observation like pick a pick b and like easy entry points you know like where's the rip current you know like uh, uh timing the sets really important you know mm -hmm. timing the sets because like uh if you're catching only set waves then you are in synchronization with the ocean for example you know because mm -hmm. like if you're catching a set wave then by the time you paddle back and then like you position yourself and stuff then you're like almost looking at like catching another you know yeah catching another set wave if like if the waves are big and then like there's like i don't know like three minutes in between sets or something i don't know right and then like you're, you're like so there's all this like uh information that you gather from that beach of observation and then you develop a strategy accordingly you know and then like there's also like you know like tricks like uh how to dominate like like very specific skills like how to um domin positioning domination for example you know so how am i going to dominate gabby medina gabriel medina <laughs> <laughs> so you know like it actually works very similar to like a, a free surf session if you if you want to catch a better wave than the other guy you gotta sit on the inside of the guy you know yeah yeah so you gotta be sneaky you know like uh, so a of strategy course, if they is have like, priority though that you can't do that if anymore. they have priority you cannot do that but you can sit really close to them and then like still pressure them you know and right, right. if they're sitting because like everybody is doing their own beach observation so everybody has an idea of where the peaks are but like usually at, at a really high level you know they you, we see on the heat screen surfers are pretty much sitting right next to each other because like yeah. uh they they both identified uh that's perfect spot to see at you know and then you're you're playing like also playing like uh peak domination mind games which is like okay if i sit really close to you you're gonna want to paddle away from me because yeah. like it's so like, like zeke, what zeke it. did to john john right yeah so like you push the other surfer deeper and deeper until they're too deep to take off you know and then like next thing you know even if you don't have priority you can you, you take the wave because the other guy's so deep you know so it's like mm, little tricks yeah, like that right, right, and right. then that's what you're gonna do to so, me when we surf, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like the heat works different because like it's, it's yeah, yeah, uh, there's yeah. no there's no like rules other than don't drop on the other guy, right? You know? And it's like, a lot harder. It, it's a lot harder in heat too because normally if you're free surfing, there's other people around. You can gauge your position relative to them, but when it's just you two, and if you're not familiar with the spot, then you guys can just both be like floating around just. I don't know, yeah, know. exactly so that the more familiar you're with the spot the better because you're, you're you're gonna be able to know uh information that the other surfer like that's why surfers you know like they're usually traveling to the city locations and, and trying to get familiar with pipeline chopu you know like yeah, and then yeah. like snow dates and bits you know like uh uh so the game is 90 percent psychological and then being psychologically calm on a competition it comes all down to how pre well prepared you are for a heat 
So if you're well prepared, if you show up early, then you're like, you have this sense of relaxment already. You show up early, do quality pitch observation. And then your plan is not like, oh, I'm going to go beat like, uh, you know, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm going to go beat that big guy right mm -hmm. now. But you're going to think more like, okay, I got to see in point A, you know, mm -hmm. and then like, and, and then like try to dominate the peak, you know, and then like, if I don't have priority, I'm just going to go down point B, you know, mm -hmm. and then like try to catch a wave of this, like a wave that at least makes me catch like, so if you have your plan ready, mm -hmm. you know, like it gives you a sense of relaxation, you know, right. and then like you're able to let go a little bit more of the nervousness. And then that's 90% of the game, you know, like being relaxed and then knowing sure. like sticking to your plan and then not tr tr trying to not pay attention to who's the other guy, you know? Right. So that's so, like, that's going to be my job. <laughs> right. Right. Sounds fun. Well, how would you, so in a free surfing, just recreational surfer, you know, context, like how would you, yeah. how would you, what would be your psychological advice for them? Where let's say you're rolling up to a break and it's super crowded. So, it's a lot of people you know what's your how what kind of game plan do you give to them what kind of psychological tips do you give to them wow i have so many like psychological drills are so cool because it's, it's like one of the coolest aspects in surfing actually i'm designing like i designed a surf lesson like long time ago you know where like i you know like I, like i'm designing like this program where you're teaching beginners everything and then one one part one big part is to explain the surfer and the psychological tricks that you can use to make yourself calmer or to make yourself better mm. right there's like for example i'm going to give you a really cool psychological drill for a everyday surfer to get better this is like a surfer like a tip to get better so there's three things that can knock you off your board right three things if you're a beginner surfer the first thing is bad foot positioning Surfing popping popping up and then not landing with their feet in the right spot, you know. So if you land with your front foot on the side of the rail, that's right. one of the reasons why you're falling, right? Right. The second thing why why surfers fall is because of their posture. You know, they don't have the right posture, which usually comes down to like having good weight distribution, as we saw, the, like you know, like biomechanics is composed by having good weight distribution forward you know being having that tucking knee you know which allows you to pay more ways more, more way forward you know like your shoulders pointing forward like i have yeah. seen your you know like if you have a good posture then you have more balance you know so it's like another right. you know like aspect of non-falling so if you have a good posture good foot position you're doing uh 66 percent of the job and then the other reason why people fall in like the beginning stages is looking down hmm really amazing psychological drill like life-changing drill for beginner surfer uh and then like comes from professional surfer also if you um fall you do this mental exercise and then it's like you fall you try to categorize your fall in three things okay Foot positioning posture eyes looking down so if you do that mental exercise every time that you fall you're always going to come up with an answer. You're going to come up with an answer and be like, okay, I fall because, oh, my feet were off, off, off sight. So next time you pop up, then you're going to have that present in your mind, especially if you do that mistake. Mm. Like after, it's, this is called mental rehearsal drill. Mm. Interesting. Right? So you do a mental rehearsal, like when you fall and then you're like, I fell because my feet were not in position, right? My feet were not in position. I acknowledged my mistake, you know? And then I'm less likely to make that mistake in the future because like I acknowledge it many times until like, I'm like, okay, like I gotta do three things, make my feet go in the same line. Um, like the other one is like, uh, have a good posture and then like keep looking forward as I'm popping up. So like, if I do those three things at the same time, or like I fell and then I did have a wrong posture instead of having my arms down, I had my arms all, all the way right, up right, and right, then like, right. it's like, you know, so it's like, yeah. This is um, yeah. this is a psychological drill that makes you better, and then also comes from professional surfing. Because like when you're doing a turn, you know, if like for example your front foot's not on there uh, on that thickest part of the board, you fall, you acknowledge that mistake. N next time, you're less likely to make that mistake. So it's a really cool psychological drill to make you better. Now, how do how do you make a surfer uh, calmer? When they're, for example, they're feeling a little bit edgy about going in or whatever, 
And then it all comes down to another beach observation. You know, we take this from professional surfing, you know, and then like we take it back and forth from professional to like being like, you know, like everyday surfing. Uh, so how, how do you make someone relax? You give them all the information of what could and cannot happen, you know? So like if, if somebody, for example, if I'm going to prepare someone to go out at Sun Sal, you know, then what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to make them do a beach observation before where they know they have an exit plan, you know? So if they, mm -hmm. for example, they lose their board, yeah. you have an exit plan, you yeah, know? That's and then you're strategy. like, okay. Yeah. So if I, if, if I lose my board, I'm going to paddle in through here, which is easier because there's a wave coming in. There's not a rip current, com rip current coming out, yep. which is usually the case. Um, you're going to paddle through that. So like having that info, extra information makes people more relaxed. Now, where am I going to sit? You know, like, uh, I'm going to sit in that spot, you know? So having a plan makes you more relaxed. Basically yeah. that's like makes uh, another yeah. way. There's another cycle. There's another way. Uh, all the things that are psychological things is like, uh, for example, this is a really interesting thing. How, how those fear work, you know, fear is another psychological thing that, that can there, there's many things that numb or mind where we're out and we're we're out on the surf. There's fear. There's like you know like um, there's being like anxious. You know there's mm -hmm. like uh, um, you know like that brain fog and stuff. So how do you, how do you become less fearful? For example, you know like if you're afraid to surf three foot waves, you know then. Um, you're not going to lose your fear by just going out on a three foot or a four foot day, you know, like the only way to overcome fear is like the exposure to fear, but like the brain works in a really funny way. I've, I've, I've studied like, um, the psychology of the sport a lot. And then like this, I've, I've come with like all sorts of psychological drills for surfers. Fear works in a specific, very funny way. And it's like this. So, um, uh, if you go surfing, if you're afraid of surfing three foot waves and then you are on the beach sitting down, looking at the waves and you're like, okay, well, like this is kind of edgy, you know, like mm -hmm. this is like mm -hmm. a, a little bit over my comfort zone, you know, right. what is your brain trying to do? Your brain is trying to keep you safe, right? Your brain is trying to keep you safe. And then like fear is the response of trying to keep you safe. But that fear sometimes is not justified by something tangible. So it means that I'm looking at the spot and then like, I am, uh, I'm seeing a kid, you know, like a five-year-old kill paddling out with not a single worry in the world. So right. it might be something really safe to do, but like somehow I am, I am feeling nervous about it, but the brain works with a little checklist, you know? So like if, if you force yourself to go out, then next time they're going to surf, you're not going to feel less fearful, you know, but you got to do it the exposure has to be for a period of time, like let's say a week. So if I feel uncomfortable surfing three foot waves, then like I go three foot, you know, like uh, for a week, you know, mm -hmm. makes me feel uncomfortable. So let's say on the seventh day, my brain like run the checklist. Okay, I went out, I survived, I survived, I survived, I survived. Then this feeling is not uh, sustained by anything logical. Then on the eighth day, I'm going to feel less right. nervous you know so it's like giving people the understanding of how like um things can affect them out there you know like makes the performance improve and then also um you know makes them less fearful to challenge themselves you know uh, or or makes them challenge themselves that's that's a really really cool psychological uh yeah so psychological it's, drill you know so it's really about giving people just making people aware that you know changing your fear of something might not happen overnight but it's just repeated exposure it, yeah. i think that's the key it right? is a process the brain yeah. the brain's really smart the brain knows that like oh you might have tricked that once but not twice right, you know? right. <laughs> so it's like but if you trick it eight times doing the same thing you know like it's just i think yeah, if i go paddle out i think if i go paddle out a pipeline eight times in a row i'm still going to be scared though <laughs> So maybe may, like, so the thing is that also with the exposure to fear, it has to be like on, uh, it has to be also, you know, not, not because like by exposing yourself to fear, you're gonna like, you know, overcome and doesn't mean that paddling out on 10 foot pipeline, like straight, like for 10 days in a row, it's gonna, you know, yeah, it's yeah. probably 
probably could work but right. still like you know it's yeah. more advisable to do it all like for example one of my dreams is i want to surf pipe um you know or like you know a wave of that like that kind you know yeah and then like i know that i'm gonna have to do it like okay i'm gonna go on a six foot day or a five foot day yeah you know? like so i'm gonna go five five foot normal not hawaiian you know <laughs> like, five foot, yeah, like yeah 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 uh, i'm so like i'm gonna expose myself like slowly to it and then build up to it right right you That's, gotta take your time uh, with it yeah i think that that is the key right that is the key yeah all right, man. Well, I think we got to yeah. uh, finish up here. Yeah. We're running out of time, but it was, uh, it was <laughs> yeah, pleasure as always. Uh, yeah, looking bro. forward to surfing with you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit, man. But uh, let's keep in touch. I'll talk to you later. Hey, everyone. It's Van. Hopefully you've been enjoying the podcast. Hopefully you've been listening to some good stories, getting some good tips that are helping you improve as a surfer. If so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review. It'll only take you literally a few seconds and share it with your friends. That's the best way you can support me so I can continue to create awesome new content for you. So thanks.